Hi, Michelle Seitz here. You're watching the lesson on heading numbering. Here's the scenario. You have a document in which you would like to add some numbered headings, such as 1, 1 1.1, etc. Watch this video to learn how to do this. Automatically numbered headings have many uses. You can cross-reference to them using the cross-reference button. And if you find you have to move a paragraph to a different section of your document, it will automatically renumber the headings when you update your document. If you take the time to do some prep work, you can also save this as a template for future use so that you will not have to perform these steps over and over. I can show you how later in the video. For now, let me show you how I have been successful creating numbered headings. On the Home tab, in the Paragraph group, click the down arrow for multi-level list. At the bottom of the list, you want to define new list style. The define new list style dialog box is displayed. The first thing you want to do is name your style. After you name your style, click the format button at the bottom of the dialog box. Now click on numbering. You're presented with a modify multi-level list dialog box. The first thing you want to do when presented with this dialog box is click the button more. This will extend the dialog box and present more fields. As you can see, there are nine different levels. We're going to start with level one. We're going to define and format the characteristics of level one. The first thing we want to do is go over to this field, link level to style. Click the down arrow and scroll down to heading one. You don't want to skip this step because it's very important that you link level one to heading one. Next, we want to format some of the characteristics of this number. I don't want a parenthesis, I want a period. So I'm going to delete the parenthesis and I'm going to put in a period. This number one is currently a field code and you don't want to delete it. This field right here is the number style for this level. If you click the down arrow, it can give you other choices. You don't have to start with the number. Some of the other choices are Roman numerals or letters, but there are many more. We're gonna start with the numbers. In this box here, click the font button. You're presented with the font dialog box. In here, you can change the font type, the font style, the font size, and many other characteristics. I want Times New Roman. So in this field, I'm gonna type the letter T, which will bring up the styles that begin with the letter T. I'll click on Times New Roman. I also want it bold. And I want this level to be size 14. I'm gonna click OK. The position fields should be set to your specifications. I will show you what my preferences are. I like all my headings aligned left. And I always want my text indented. So for level one, I'm going to indent my text at 0.25. And following the number, it will add a tab. You can click on this button if you want all of the levels set to the same position. So for instance, the number at this level is set at zero and the text position will be at 0.25 and for each additional level, it will add a 0.25. Since that is not my preference, I'm gonna click cancel and I'm gonna set each level individually. I don't need to adjust most of these other fields, so I'm going to leave them as the default settings. Now we're going to set level two. 
When I click on level two, all the fields will reset. So level two, I want linked to heading two. This defaulted to the lowercase a. I'm gonna change it to a number. I'm gonna take out the parenthesis and add a period. Now, this is very important. We need to include the level number from the previous level or levels. So we wanna put our cursor before this field code and we wanna click the down arrow and I want level one included in my numbering schema. So I click level one, that will add the level one number. I will add a period to separate those two numbers. The text will indent at 0.5, however, since I want all of mine aligned on the left margin, I'm gonna change this to zero. In the font dialog box, we're gonna change it to Times New Roman I still want it bold, but this time I want 12 point and say, okay. Now let's go to level three. We're gonna link it to heading three. We want our number level to be one. I wanna delete the parenthesis and add a period. I wanna put my cursor before that field code. Now I need to Add level one and a period and go back in and add level two and a period. I want my font to be Times New Roman again and bold and I'm gonna leave it at the 12 point and say okay. My text indented at 0.75 is fine However, I want it left aligned. So I will make this zero. Now we'll go to level four and repeat all these steps. We're gonna do this for each level down to nine. You can do it for however many levels of heading numbering you want. Now after I have set all my formatting for my numbers, I click okay and click okay again. Now we want to open up the styles dialog box. So on the home tab, in the styles group, click the arrow in the lower right corner. Now, as you can see, we only have a few styles in this style dialog box. So we need to add some headings and we also want to modify these heading styles. So first, let's add the rest of the headings. So in order to do this, click this box here, Manage Styles. The Manage Styles dialog box is displayed. Click on Recommend tab. Now as you can see, headings two through nine say hide until used. So we wanna click each one and we want to show these styles in our styles box. So hold your shift key down and click each one. Now hit the show button and click okay. Now you can see all the heading styles are displayed in the styles dialog box. So our first line is a heading one. Our heading one style is surrounded by a box. This tells me that the heading one style is applied to this line. I wanna modify this style. I click the down arrow and I wanna click modify. That brings up the modify styles box. Now, as you can see, Times New Roman, 14, bold. My color is automatic. Mine is automatically black. You can change it to whatever color you want. Now we wanna click on the format button and we wanna click on paragraph. Now this is my preference. I like 12 point spacing before my heading one and I like six point after. I also like a hanging indent. And since my heading one text is tabbed over at 0.25, 
I want any text in the heading that is so long that it wraps to the next line aligned under the beginning of the first line of text and not aligned at the left margin. I'll leave the other fields as is and click OK. And I'm going to click OK again. This is my heading to line. So I want to click in this line and then I want to click on my heading to style because I want to apply the heading to style to it. I also want to modify it. So I click the down arrow, click on modify. You can see that it's Times New Roman 12 bold automatic. Again, I want to check the format of the paragraph. It's left aligned. It's left with no indent. My hanging indent is at 0.5, which is correct. It's incrementing every 0.25. And I prefer six point before and after my heading two through nine. So I'm going to click OK and click OK again. Now you will notice there are two sets of the numbers 1.1. The first one is a field code and the second set was manually entered when I started this document. I'm going to delete this manually numbered 1.1. Let's add a heading three. You can see it automatically numbered when I clicked heading three, but now I need to modify it. So I click the down arrow, select modify. This heading was set for default characteristics. You can see that the default settings are different. I want to change this to Times New Roman. 12 point is fine. I want to change it to bold, but my color I want to make automatic. And I want to check the formatting in the paragraph. Alignment left, no indentation, hanging at 0.75. That's correct for heading three. But my before and after, I want to change. I want to change this to six point before and six point after. And I want to click OK and OK. And I'm going to do this for each heading thereafter. As I mentioned before, if you're going to use this type of formatting over and over again, you might want to save it as a template. One option you can use is this. Since this path is unique to each computer, I will give you the path here. File, save as, users, click on your computer name, then go to app data, roaming, Microsoft, and then templates. When you get to the templates folder in the save as type field, click on word template. If your template has macros in it, use macro enable template. Since ours doesn't have any macros, we're going to use word template and click save. So now if you need to open that template, you go to the Windows icon, New, My Templates, and your templates will be displayed. Now when you open the new template, it will be saved as a .docx file. Just change the file name, and you're ready to use the document from the template. And that is the end of this lesson, Heading Numbering.